my project was rather on vitamins. So I was um, quantifying vitamins in given vitamin tablets. So I, was, I had to find like um, the amount of vitamins in those tablets um, and compare them to like standard uh, vitamin tablet and see like how much error, like how close I, I was to the, the values. And uh, so I, I had to do a few dilution, run, run the samples um, through like a machine and uh, have like different kind of um, graphs and kind of compare everything and stuff so that was kind of boring but I was I found it quite interesting uh, because you can use the same way to kind of quantify um, like the amount of vitamin in like a um, bottle of oranges and the shelf life of an or like a bottle of oranges so in biomedical science you for the first two years you're gonna do a bit of mathematics like statistics um, it's, it was called, I think the module was called data analysis so you do a bit of statistics and stuff, all this boring thing I just hated it and uh, you, you, did, you do a few modules so, such as microbiology which was my favourite unfortunately I didn't do you know too well <laughs> on my last year but I really loved it microbiology, clinical biochemistry I really loved it um, was the what else pathology? I enjoyed the last year a bit more, um, like information wise, because um, it was more based on like clinical stuff, like what goes on, like life, like in reality in a hospital, what goes on. Um, like I think it was clinical biochemistry, where um, you kind of do a lot of case study, where you have like um, a patient and uh, you have all the symptoms that the patient has and you have to kind of find out what all the different um, you make a few do a few researches to kind of gather enough information to come up with a diagnosis and it was quite important it was quite interesting i really liked that part of the the course itself and uh, also the practicals like you will spend quite a few times in a lab i like to read about stuff but Mainly, I like the practical side of things. So working in a lab was one of my favorite time. Um, cell culturing, you know, um, gram staining, where you have to like put a few dye on the microscope side just to kind of find out what kind of bacterium you're looking at, or the colonies, um, cell counting, using the centrifuge machine. I remember when we extracted like DNA from an onion, PCR, doing PCR, just to like look, look at all the different strains. On the last year, which was where I decided to wake up, um, you had to, you have to choose a few like optional modules. I think also on the second year, if I remember, yeah, you have to choose, you have some optional modules that you can do, you have to choose from and uh, that will kind of help with your, your points. You have to like get a few points from each module you know to get a good grade I guess so if you had like optional modules it would it was uh, you know a good thing to do um as usual I was still behind and I kind of found out found, I found out about those extra modules <laughs> just randomly from you know my fellow like colleagues and stuff so I think I chose like, one or something <laughs> I didn't choose the maximum of it and uh, that was one of my big mistakes as well I didn't on my third year I didn't I don't think I had any optional modules. You do have an advisor to kind of help you through like choosing on modules and stuff and I didn't care about all this thing and only on my last year um I decided to <laughs> have a quick quick meeting with my advisor but apparently there was a mess with my, all my module choices. Um I didn't choose enough op optional modules and it was kind of late and stuff. After my graduation, <clears throat> everything was dark because I was like, okay, so what's next? I'm sure like, pretty much 80% of students do not know that you, it's not all about uni itself, it's about what happens after uni. After uni, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with your degree? What's the next step? My mistake was 
I was only focusing on graduating and that was it. But I didn't know like what where to go, like what to do afterwards, how to get a job. I wasn't interested in that. I spent six months still working in retail. I was working in Gap and in Oxford Circus, quite busy. I had a good time. But there I met lovely people and I still have like of a few people that I still talk to up to now and one of my best friends um, Nisha that <laughs> I knew from Gap as well she's still lovely guys we have such a good time and I you know I love fashion so um, I, I, I kind of enjoyed you know expressing myself through my style my makeup my hair I really had a good time um, in Gap guys so I was working for six months after graduating in Gap in retail and the world after that three months gap, I started to feel so down. I was I was really depressed because of the fact that in my head I was graduate, but I wasn't working within the NHS. I didn't have a you know NHS um, job. I wasn't using my degree. I was lost. So I didn't. I was quite depressed. And once again, I didn't have people around me to like advised me on what to do and I wasn't interacting with much people so I was quite depressed until when um, I personally I made a conscious decision to wake up and change things because the only thing that would needed to be done was had to come from me I had to make the decision to change my life to, to change my future so I had I, you know, I started to like apply for job, like literally almost every other day on the NHS website, like crazy. I went to a few interviews. I even applied outside of London. Um, yeah, I, I applied outside of London. I went to Cambridge. I didn't give up, guys. Do not give up in your search. Even if you're kind of late in the whole process, don't give up because it's either you you keep going and get a result or you give up and don't and you just stay where you are so yeah um so after six months i got my first nhs job <coughs> it was in pharmacy i did biomedical science but i ended up in pharmacy and it was i was very exciting like i was so grateful that to have you know to work finally within the nhs because it's quite good even if you don't get the job that you wanted straight away, it's good to have the experience. Experience is so key, guys. It's like an open door. It doesn't matter whether it's like a completely different job from where you... As long as it's kind of related, it was like a, a lab kind of pharmacy because you have the dispensary when where they sell, when they give out the drugs and stuff and the stores. But you also have the aseptic part of the pharmacy and this is where i worked like manufacturing the, like drugs so, and so you have to wear like um special equipment to go in it would look it looked like a lab lab basically where you have to use needles draw up stuff and i had fun <laughs> just doing it and uh yeah so um i did that for like a year and then i started to feel like why did I get a biomedical science degree for? I need to use that. That's what I really want to do. I want to work in a lab, but on the, um, as a biomedical scientist. But, um, and I kind of started to speak with one of my fellow, like, <laughs> uni kind of um, colleague. And up to now, she's such, she, she, this girl is so, she's like my little angel. And it's um, Abby, uh, Abimbola, Abimbola. <laughs> she helped me with my CV as well. After uni, you can't just start working as a biological scientist. You have to get like a portfolio, which is like, um, I think like a booklet or something that you have to prepare while you're doing some work experience or you have to do in some MLA job, which is like a medical lab assistant. So while you're doing that, you can like build like a portfolio and it, it shows like all your work and how you're working, whatever, and you get validated through that. And then you can be like a biomedical scientist. So you don't become, even if you have a biomedical science degree, it still mean nothing. So yeah, um, I spent one year, um, 
doing my first pharmacy aseptic work and then I started to I met a few, I met a few people and I started to like once again through information you kind of you know progress so people started to talk to me about locuming which is what I'm doing right now locuming is basically when you work temporary but full time and because I think it's because it's temporary you do get a better pay it's about double or you can even get more than that of what you get if you do like a permanent job so yeah and you always have and you also have like the possibility to negotiate how much they can pay you so yeah for any different agencies um you register um you'd go through the crb things and stuff and uh, when everything's ready they kind of you just give send them your cv uh, if needed you have to go through like do a few vaccines kind of do the whole work for you they kind of send your cv to different hospitals whenever they have vacancies and they get back to you so the good thing about the, those agencies is that you don't have to go for interviews you, you they literally just the hospital will just look at your cv and see if you're you know you have the skills but bear in mind that you're not permanent stuff so you don't have any holiday like you don't you can't just take any holiday you don't get paid for it even though in your locking pay you get a few like holiday money pay straight away like in your normal pay any kind of time off that you take from work you don't get paid for it if you're sick or whatever you don't get paid for it that's what annoys me and also because it's not permanent you kind of have to be on the go you have to be very active ready to like get a new job like right now um, the, I was lucky enough to get like a one-year locum job um, it's an ongoing contract but um, it can end I'm planning to start contacting my agency and other agencies as well um, to like start about you know just in case you know anything comes up towards the end of my contract I can just jump from this job to another or also you have the possibility to like get like a position in the job that you're already in like if my the hospital I'm in are quite happy if they're happy with me and they need someone and they know how you work it's easier for, for you for them to like just keep you so you have that possibility as well and uh, full locking because you like go you have temporary kind of contracts in a way um, you get to work in different hospitals and uh, you kind of like build up skills this way so I really really I learned a lot guys and I'm so grateful for that one of agencies specialize in biomedical science as well I'm pretty much sure but because I'm already doing this job um, I don't mind um, carrying on until the end of my contract and then see what I can do it's always good to be proactive I would say experience is key so start looking for job even while you're studying so if you want to follow me on Instagram um, on snapchat on Facebook um, at style and DNA still the same feel free subscribe to my channel I have so much more to share with you guys and I feel much more relaxed in myself as time goes um, so I'm enjoying my channel a bit more as well so yeah guys um, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time bye